Well, hello again, my friends. Dave McDonald here. Once again, Quarantunes. Little time we take together to draw some cartoons together to pass the time while we're kind of stuck inside. I hope you're having fun doing this. Of course, you know I love drawing, so I'm enjoying this. Uh, let's get some warm-ups. Oh, I already filled up my warm-up page. <laughs> I guess I got an early start. Put another piece of paper down here, do some warm-ups. I like to do some simple shapes. Go ahead, grab your pencil, join me. Get your hand loosened up like this, right? Drawing some circles, some ovals, maybe some squiggly lines just to get loosened up. I'd like to take this opportunity also to do some shout outs. Today I just wanna shout out another school that I enjoy going to and teaching. And that's Irmo Elementary. Irmo Elementary. I've been going there. I think I've been going there for, I think, six years straight. Working with the second grade team. Phenomenal, phenomenal lineup of second grade teachers. All right. Hello. I'd like to shout out Miss Metz, Miss Parker, Miss Crossett, and Miss Algar. Miss Algar. Boy, that is a that is one all-star team of second grade teachers, I can tell you. I don't think I know a group like that that enjoys seeing students grow and become better writers than the second grade team at Irmo Elementary, led by, I think she's still there, Principal Miss Wiley. Miss Wiley, hey, I hope you're doing okay. She brings me back every year. And then Miss Luby in the front office. Miss Luby, if you don't know, she keeps everything running. Always someone in the school who keeps things moving smoothly, and that's Miss Luby. And she, whenever I'm there, she takes good care of me, and of course, anyone who walks through the front door of Irmo Elementary. So, hey to my friends out there, Irmo Elementary. All right, I think I'm all warmed up. Why don't we get started today? What I thought we would do. I'm reminded that since we're stuck inside, one of the only places we're really allowed to go is the supermarket, right? In case we need to get some food, we have to eat. So they let us go to the supermarket. So I began thinking about the supermarket and I began to think about personification. We talked about that the other day. Do you remember what personification is? It's when you give human qualities to things that aren't human. So that could be an animal, a pet, or it could be a dirty sock <laughs> or food. So at the supermarket, we've got lots of food. And I thought we'd bring a couple characters to life from the supermarket. Maybe overnight after the workers come out and restock the shelves, the lights go dim and the food comes to life. And so let's go ahead, get your pencil out draw, and you know I like to start with my simple shapes, and I draw very faintly until I get my markers out and do my marker work. But go ahead and draw a rectangle shape. We're going to bring to life a corn dog. <laughs> How about that? And for that, it's basically a rectangle shape, but go ahead, round off the corners at the bottom and make that little stick. Corn dog is on a stick, right? And we're going to have, this corn dog is going to be the sheriff. Maybe he's the sheriff of the supermarket. And so he's got, he's going to have a big hat on his head. And what we'll do, make a circle here, go, let's see. Like that. And a big hat <laughs> behind the brim of the hat. There's a, he's got a, a band around the hat. And our sheriff, give him two eyeballs with our oval shapes, our pupils, those round circles inside. And this corn dog, sheriff, of course, he's got, he's got to have a badge here. Put a circle here with a star in it. That's his badge, okay? Give him a pair of denim jeans, maybe with a big wide belt buckle, some stitching. We can finish that off in a bit. He's got an arm over here, make an elbow macaroni. Remember that kind of curved 
it looks like an elbow macaroni. That's why I call it that. So, and then a ball at the end will create his fist. He's going to be holding something. He's going to be holding a hank of rope. A little, we'll just kind of simplify this. He's got some rope in his hand. All right. Got some rope in his hand. Maybe another elbow macaroni out here. He's getting ready to do something. I didn't tell you what they're going to be doing yet. Go ahead and make your circles for the fingers. These characters, I'm going to draw one over here too. They're getting ready for the big gum fight at the OK Corral. <laughs> You remember that from history? The big gum fight at the OK Corral? <laughs> I don't think it was a gum fight, but it did happen in the Old West. And we're going to kind of put a new twist on it because they're going to be chewing bubble gum. And they're going to see which character can blow the biggest bubble. All right, so if he's, and he's determined now, so we're going to give him some determined eyebrows there. But he's chewing his gum, he's getting ready to blow a bubble, and he's squaring off against, it has to be a villain character, right? And let's see, he's a corn dog. Let's create a, an egg. I always like to make egg characters. They're a lot of fun. Just an oval shape, right? Obviously, he's got to be wearing a, well, he's going to, let's give him a mask. He's a villain, so he's wearing a mask. It's tied behind his head, so make a circle and some little half half little circles back here for the twist, how he's tied it up. And he's got these two eyeballs, and he's definitely not a happy looking character. He's a, he's a villain. He's got his mask over half of his nose, okay. He also has a hat on. Let's see. Let's give him a big, big hat like that with maybe a band. But just to be silly, I'm going to put a flower, <laughs> just because I think it's funny, in his hat. He's a big bad guy, but he's got a flower in his hat. All right. <laughs> And we won't see his mouth. He's got, he's one of these old West characters with a big, mighty big mustache. Real big mustache, all right? Covers up uh, his jeans. Oh, over here on the side of his jeans, he's got a holster. And he's getting ready because he's in a, a gum fight. So he's got to have a pack of gum in here, right? He's got a stick of gum ready to go. Maybe we'll write the word gum in his holster, right? And give him a elbow macaroni with a circle at the end. He's getting ready to pull that piece of gum out. Now this character, he's already chewing his gum. At least the sheriff, he's kind of got a head start. This character has to retrieve his gum from his holster. He's not quite ready yet. Let's see, let's give them the shadows that they need beneath. Remember, they're up off the ground. Just adds a little bit of life to your characters. More motion lines. All right, <clears throat> I think I'm ready to ink my characters now. So we've got Sheriff Corndog versus Bubblegum McCoy. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start inking my Wild West supermarket characters. Again, I love, with personification, I love imagining things that aren't alive coming to life. And the supermarket is full of great opportunities for things to come to life, all right? Elbow macaroni. A 
hank the rope over here i hope i'm not getting in your way as i get close to my work kind of hover over the top of my cartoon motion lines little knot at the bottom okay can you see that okay let's continue on with the shape of our corn dog started with a rectangle he's getting ready to draw of course he doesn't have to draw he's got a mouthful of gum i don't know what he's getting ready for he shouldn't be too awfully worried should should he He looks like he's ready, though, I'll tell you that. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Badge. Belt. Big, wide buckle. Maybe the seams that run down the side of his pants there. And the corn dog stick. And I like to do things like this. A little shadow, because that corn dog has a little mass over the top. It's a little bigger than the stick, so it's going to cause a little shadow. And maybe we can add some dimension on the sides with these little dots, right? Let's grab our other pen and draw our little star for his badge. There we go. Maybe in his belt we draw a horseshoe for some reason. His belt buckle. And let's maybe do some cross hatching. He's got denim pants on, so they'd be darker. So when we're working in black and white, you can just do this cross hatching effect and it gives it the, the appearance that it's darker than the white, all of the white that you're seeing. All right. And over here, we'll give him his shadow up off the ground. And let's come over here to our villain, Bubblegum McCoy. Oh, yeah. Inking that big hat with the band and the silly flower. <laughs> and that little knot at the back with the ties right and let's see here there's the mask eyeball shape just a oval and then a half oval on the side of it we make kind of like a letter v for those downturned eyebrows gives them that menacing look and then let's see maybe his mustache That's one big mustache, isn't it? Boy, oh boy. And he's got his belt. And his holster. With a stick of gum all ready to go. Had those little accent lines. So we draw attention to that. And the viewer knows to look at that because it's important to the scene. Elbow macaronis leading down to the hand. Okay. Rest of his body here. There he is. Motion lines out here. He's getting ready to chew his gum. I've got to turn this sideways if I'm going to write the word gum. I wonder who's going to win this 
gum fight. Who's going to be able to blow the biggest bubble? Well, if you ask me, I, here's what I think is going to happen. Right? They're going to be out here. Add a little bit of scenery back here, right? Maybe put the horizon line behind them. All right, they're going to be out there. Let me erase my initial pencil lines just to clean it up a little bit. So we've got uh, Sheriff Corndog here squaring off against Bubblegum McCoy. Now again, Sheriff Sheriff Corndog, he's got a little head start because he's already got that bubble gum in his mouth, doesn't he? Bubblegum McCoy, on the other hand, over here, I think he's he may be faster on the draw. So he gets that gum in his mouth and he chews it pretty quick and he gets that bubble blowing real fast. So I think it's going to be a close call. But what I think is going to happen... <laughs> This is just me now. I have not been to a lot of gum fights between a corn dog and an egg, but here's what I think would happen. I think what's going to happen, look at he's got a big mustache, right? That, I believe, is going to cause a problem. When he blows a bubble, where do you think that bubble is going to get stuck to? That's right, his mustache. I think it's going to cause all kinds of problems. And can you imagine trying to clean bubble gum out of a mustache? <laughs> I can't. It seems like it would be miserable. Right? But that's what I think is going to happen. Okay, so again, the hero, the good guy always wins over the bad guy. It's just classic storytelling, right? But this is a nice little representation of two characters. We've got good conflict here, right? Good conflict. Trouble, problem, mischief, mayhem, makes the story interesting. Happening at the setting of our comic would be the supermarket. Maybe you could take these two characters and make a comic now and tell me, show me what happens when Sheriff Corndog takes on Bubblegum McCoy in the famous gum fight at the OK Corral. <laughs> All right, friends, I hope you had draw fun drawing with me today. Uh, be well, stay safe, take care of one another, please. And until next time, we'll see you later.